between my eyes Walked through the park, came out better on the other side See life's like a peach if you find the sand And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, coaches, consultants create additional revenue streams and stop just trading time for dollars. We hold you accountable to achieve your biggest goals with a step-by-step roadmap. Rise 25 is run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran. It is application only. Today, I am very excited. We have Paul Bigham, one of the top direct response marketers. He's founder of Bigham Agency. Summed up in a nutshell, Paul helps make it easy for people to feed the hungry, house the homeless, clothe the naked, and heal the sick. Paul, that's no small feat. Brian Kurtz introduced Paul at a VIP Titan dinner as the largest non-Jewish contributor to the state of Israel. He's raised over $1 billion for the state of Israel through direct mail, which he's going to talk about. And one company they work with was quoted as saying, during our 15-year association, the Bigham Agency has helped grow our annual budget from $4 million to $90 million a year in charitable support. Fun fact about Paul is he designs his own cowboy boots and he saw Jimi Hendrix live. Paul, thanks for joining me. Well, great. Pleased to be here. Thank you. I don't know if there's any other lessons, Paul, but you had three options when you were in retail that you would give people. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. And I still do that today. I still do it the same way. Even when I do my ask, my ask a raise right now, I'll do multiple choices uh, so that they've got an option. Uh, and, And that was where I had learned. Uh, early in my selling days, that uh, someone would want a coat and tie or a shirt or a sweater or a sports outfit or something. And I'd just go over and they would say, I need some help. So I'd pick out what I thought was the very best thing. Just put it out there, just gorgeous. And they'd look at it and go, yeah, I'm not sure. And then sometimes they'd leave, sometimes they'd buy it, or sometimes they'd goof around. So I learned if I put something really fashionable, pretty uncomfortable for more, most people to wear, but still nice. High end. High end, high end. It really takes someone with some moxie to wear it. And then I'd get something really nice, middle of the road. And then I'd get something that was almost ugly. Very pedestrian, very, <laughs> very mundane. That's what I would probably have chose. Yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> and then you, you show the high fashion, you'd show this really nice, uh, acceptable, and then you'd show the ugly, and generally they'd pick the one in the middle. And so I think it's the principle there is choice and knowing what to do, part of it is I don't want to make a bad decision. So if I see something that's too wild for me to wear, then I won't wear that. I see something that's too ugly for me to wear, I'm not going to wear that, then this must be good. Yeah. And it made a, made a huge difference. Yeah. I use it still all the time and every direct mail. I use it online, all the time on online right yeah. now. It's framing. Yeah, talk about how you use it. I know it's been used on me. I think, you know, with the real estate stuff, when they were showing us the house, I didn't realize at the time until after I learned more marketing principles, but... Yeah. They definitely went to like this really, really nice place and they went to this really horrible place yeah. and then there was a middle of the road place. And yeah. I was like, well, that I can't afford. This is horrible. This is way better than the horrible one. So, right. but anyways, yeah. how do you use it? Yeah, and I, I think that um, it, uh, people don't know what they want until they know what they don't want. And that helps them to figure out what they don't want. It takes away some of the risk. It takes away the confusion. It makes it easier for them to make a decision. And um, the yeah, even on um, well, you uh, you've seen around many a time in um, online packages. Uh, you can get the ninety the the, the nine dollar ninety seven cent package, or you can get the nine thousand nine hundred ninety seven dollar package. Or you can get the nine hundred ninety-seven dollar package. Right. So you got got the framings in there, right. you know. And most of the guys never expect to sell the, the ten, whatever the range is, the the, the top end. It, it's having what is it? Kennedy said, you know, it's having a gold package, or a platinum right. package. Platinum gold. You know, it's yeah, right. it, it's a hundred thousand dollar package, and, and six people in the world are going to do it, but three hundred people are going to do the the one thousand package. So, uh, you know, one of the key retailers and. 
almost had his name, Harvey, not Harvey Winston, in Toronto. But but a lot of a lot of retailers will do that. Um, you'll you'll have the very very expensive high end car suit or whatever, and seldom do you ever expect to sell those. But it sells a bunch. It's back to the black sock and and yellow socks story. You know, it's it's having that comparison and a frame and and framing and anchoring is is a big part of merchandising. I'm glad you brought that up. If you can get that anchor in early, uh, which is where a lot of the online people are, are doing, get the anchor in. Here's the nine hundred ninety dollar package. Normally, one thousand nine hundred. The super package is nine thousand. You've got those anchors right. and you've got the framing in there. So great key key uh, concepts. Right. What have you found any? percentage breakdown works better like the platinum package is like three times the middle or the middle is x amount more than the the lower is there any math that you've seen that's that's worked as far as as that goes or um the the one i'm seeing is the the 97s it ends in 97s uh and there is a psychology there uh typically 99s are sell oriented if you go into Walmart or Kmart or Neiman Marcus or wherever you're going into, mm. again, making a framing there, usually the sale items are 99. Mm. So in the 95s or not, and you'll want to make it round, uh, certainly not $19, 18 dollars is what you want to do, uh, or 1899. Um, so I've seen the 97 be, be a really good, a lot of people use the 97s. Uh, I don't have a percentage from... Yeah. 97 to 199, 197. Yeah, I'm just curious, yeah, if you've seen anything like that. Um, so, Paul, you grew up in, in Texas, right? Texas, Yeah, right. so when you were growing up, what did you want to be? Oh, professional baseball player. Ba- baseball player? Oh, yeah. And you if played baseball? Any talent, any talent at all, I would have been a professional baseball player. Did you have talent? Uh, no, I didn't have any talent. <laughs> Because you mentioned too early on that you have Cubs. Are you? You're not a Cubs fan though. You have, you said you have Cubs tickets. Yeah. Uh, you? Again, uh, back there on the wall, I got to go to the Cubs playoff game. Not this year, but year before last. It's a quick, quick, funny story. Uh, I, I got in. I was actually at a, at a mastermind uh, meeting with Dan Sullivan, and uh, got on the, the train, went downtown. The Cubs game was going on. I got there about the fifth inning, bought a ticket. And it was, uh, they are playing the Cardinals. It was the, the first year they'd really been in the playoffs a long time. They're playing the Cardinals, the, the Nemes, the hated Cardinals. And uh, so and I had a red jacket on and uh, it, uh, cranberry. It wasn't red, cranberry. And uh, <laughs> so I got the ticket. It was one to one when I hit fifth inning and it went in and sat down. And all these guys around me were like Saturday Night Live, the, the Bears, and I mean, big old robust and vocal. And, and so I came in in this red jacket. I sat down and the Cubs hit a home run. Just like I sit down, home run. It goes up, and they're like, "Look what you did! You did! You're our good luck!" And they and that was the, the night that there were more home runs hit than any other game in Major League Baseball history. Wow! And so I was their good luck charm. So I got all this ribbing, you know, and and, and you've got to come back to the next game and and everything. So so that uh, we're that, friendly in Chicago. Yeah, very very. Yeah, you know, and it, it was great. Of course, I'm a Cubs fan, and. Uh, uh, certainly like the Rangers, you know, Mickey Mantle would be my hero. Shortstop is what I wanted to play. I got hit in the nose too many times with bad balls to continue to be a good shortstopper. But uh, uh, that, that would be my fun So thing. how did you get into then the world of direct response? I, I think I've always had um, uh, going to um, back unique ability. Uh, I, I think just, you know, the package that, that I came with, uh, I, I've done some uh, this is really interesting, you and I have talk, haven't talked about this at all. As a matter of fact, I just uncovered it last week in another group that I was in, yeah. Stegen group, great, great group. Um, the, uh, I think what we do today plant seeds for what will happen in the future. One of my goals in life is to make life better for my great-great-grandchildren. Hmm. And right now I have a 17-and-a-half-year-old as my oldest grandchild. So I'm talking two generations that don't exist right now. Right. And the way that I think I can make life better for them is to make me a better person now so that I can do things that will help make life better for them. And it's going to be a difficult life then. Having looked back in a conversation last week, which I'd never come across, my grandfather, uh, I, I love to say I'm from Texas. I'm uh, in a, a long, long-standing uh, Texas cattle rancher family. Now, that's true. However, 
It's River Bottom Ranchers. What's that? River Bottom Ranchers are the guys who bought the land in the, the river bottoms. Mm. And in the river bottoms, even now we have flood control is an issue, but back then there was no flood control whatsoever. So when the rivers would flood, it would come way, way up, two, 300 feet up in, into, up into the, the mountainside. So nobody would buy that land. You couldn't build a house on it. You couldn't farm it. You couldn't put animals on it, or it's difficult to put animals on it. So my grandfather would buy this, these acres along the river bottom for like a dollar an acre or something. And then he would put cows down there. He would run cattle and they were wild as animals and they were very difficult to do. But that he, but he made a living. He had eight, eight children and two that passed away. So Jeez. 10 total. Wow. And the guy figured out how to make a living out of the river bottoms. And so there's that entrepreneurial spirit. I only met my grandfather maybe three times in my life. He died at 93. Hmm. And I would have been six or seven when I last saw him. And I think I only saw him two other times before that. So I had no indicate, no conversation with him. We didn't sit down and he told me the facts of life and how to be an entrepreneur. But somewhere, someplace, he did that. Yeah. It's transferred. It got passed down somehow. Somehow to me. Yeah. And hopefully somehow it'll go forward. So I think there's always been, and I've done genetics, and I think there's some other things in there. Uh, and I still remember, I got out of the Army, and somebody asked me what I wanted to do. And I said, I'm not for sure, but I, I know it'll always be involving merchandising. Really? Some of the capacity. Uh, and I had a paper route when I was uh, uh, in junior high. And I used to be the one who formed to collect the bottles, and we'll go and get candy and stuff. And You're always enterprising. Some, some, yeah. Somehow, it's part of it. You know, yeah. It's part of the unique ability that's in there. So I, I pursued... Um, well, the other reason I took marketing in college is so I didn't have to take uh, a second year of, uh, lang of language. That was the other reason I went into, uh, I thought about pre-law, but uh, you have to take two, two years of Spanish or, or some language, so you don't in, in marketing. Um, but I went back and got my law degree later, uh, but you didn't have to take language to do that. Uh, so I've always just had a, a, an interest in it, and so I went from throwing papers, I worked in a grocery store, uh, then I went to the clothing store, sold, was a department manager, was a buyer, was a merchandise manager. And then when I went to SMU, I, I did marketing, and then my MBA is in market, general business uh, marketing. And then all of the courses, I'm taking a ton of courses, just a ton of courses, and they're all merchandise marketing oriented. Yeah. Uh, so that's... So Paul, kind of how have you come up with, what have you come up with lately? Because I know you always think about helping and leaving a legacy. What have you come up with lately of how will you make sure your great, great, great grandchildren are in a good place or something that you leave behind? What, what are you thinking now about well, that? The, the, again, the main thing is, is to work on me, to, to get mm -hmm. as much of me out of the way of me as I can. Uh, what does that uh, look like? A, being, a, being a fallen human. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're, the easy way I've, I've come up with to describe that, there's a song, um, Young is his last name. But anyway, it says, uh, when I'm with you, I'm the person I want to be. It's a good song. What I've reversed is said, when I'm with me, I'm the person I want to be. <laughs> so I'm trying to be everything that I, I can be, integrity, honest, direct, caring, considerate. Um, and, and it's a journey. You know, it's a journey. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's our... Our scripture says, you know, it's it's a continuum until we reach perfection. I'm not sure that definition of perfection is what we think of it meaning. I think it's just more of a journey than, a, than an ending yeah. point. So you think uh, by you just self-improving, that will then just happen? Like you just continue to make yourself better. You're going to make everyone else around you better, your your family. And that then that will basically um, allow you to be in the position to... For your family to, you know, or you to leave a legacy to your family and great great grandchildren. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I think the 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 example um, when my grandchildren, my children, and my because the children, you have some uh, children in the business. I have two. Yeah. Yeah. My, my son and my daughter. Yeah. So yeah. talk about their roles a little bit. Uh, uh, both in account uh, service. Uh, and, and people usually say, how is that? And I say, well, it's great for me, but you have to ask them how it is for them. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's fun. I enjoy having them here. So, uh, and then I, I send them to the, many of the same courses. Uh, 
My son and daughter have been to Singularity University that I went through a great program. Uh, they both been a strategic coach. Uh, one of them has been through Stegen. Uh, so as many times as I can get, when I learn something, I say, this is really good for me, that I want to put them in that position so that they can, and they'll, they'll learn different things from for them than I learned for me. Yeah. And hoping that's it. And uh, I think in some ways, uh, Brand you and the other, um, what's that expression? If you want to know who you will be and where you will be in five years, just look at the people you're around and the books you're reading today. Is that sh- not Shoeless Joe Jackson, but Jack, one of the Jacksons, like, Jackson Five, one of the Jacksons. <laughs> Shoeless Joe or Michael Jackson, one of the two. Yeah, it was yeah. Joe Jackson. I forget what his name is. Anyway, um, so I, I'm a real believer in that. I, yeah. I look at the people that I'm around and I'm and the absorbing them, and I think they absorb from me. 100%. Uh, it's not a goal of mine. I'm, I'm really just focusing on me. But I think that's what is the you know the the thing of the butterflies. You know, if, you know, butterflies all get together and eventually islands over. The same thing will happen. I'm not quite sure that happens, but I I, I think there's an intuitive that works that way. And um, um, I can just make the world a, a little bit better. Not a world saver. I don't believe. I no longer believe I can save the world. That was back when I was in the twenties, in my twenties. Uh, but but I think I can make it better by treating my my, treating myself better, number one. Uh, you know, there, there are two, two basic principles. Uh, have no other God before you and love your neighbor as yourself. We can't love your neighbor unless you love yourself. Right. So if I treat my neighbors the way I treat myself sometimes, I'm not very nice to them. So I'm trying to, to come through a better better position on that, understanding myself better. The uh, What is it uh, Marianne Williamson says? You know, it's, it's not the, uh, the fear that I'm inadequate. It's the fear that I'm really good. So I'm really trying to embrace my skills, not in a not in an ego way, not in a pedantic way, not in a a um, hedonistic way, but to just to embrace them, just to be real with who they are. It's 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 just as I think it's just as wrong to be overly inflated as it is to be underinflated. To say, oh my gosh, I'm no good. I can't do this and this and that and the other. Just to say, well, I can do this. I, I do do that. I don't do this, but I do do this. I do this well. And I, I do marketing well and. We did go from from four million with one organization. We're actually up to 126 million this wow. year. That's amazing. On that, so their uh, their their first appeal before me, their first their, their highest appeal, not the first, their highest appeal before I came in was um, seventeen thousand dollars, and now we'll do. We'll do around six million dollars a month right now. Wow, seventeen thousand. Remarkable. It is. And congratulations. I had, a, I had yeah. a great person. Thank you. I had a great person leading the organization who made it possible for us to do what we did. It's do. obviously a team effort. Yeah. 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 So yeah. With, without that person leading, uh, at, uh, I like to say it's like the the head gander does for the the other breaks that that vortex out there so that the other geese can fly along behind him and. That's what he did. He very adventuresome, very willing to understands marketing and willing to take chances. And sometimes he took chances that didn't work. And but most of the time he took chances and it did work. Yeah. So. so, apply two questions. Thank you so much, by the way, for for the time. This is this is very valuable. Very um, I have two last questions, but um, before I ask them, I want to point people towards your website and where should they check you out online. I know. Uh, BigamAgency.com. Uh, people can go to B I G H A M and then agency.com. Are there any other places we should point people towards online? Uh, just making sure that there's no N in there. The, the Binghams are my Irish cousins, the renegade cousins, and we don't associate with them. So it's just the Binghams. So no, just B I G, not B I N G. Right. Uh, that's yeah. it. And then, you know, if anybody has questions, I'm happy to entertain questions. Are uh, you, like, trying to focus right now on certain industries? Or do you, like, what type of clients do you take on? Or do you prefer nonprofits? If someone's looking to, uh, you know, for a marketing agency, direct response, and looking for what you do? Yeah, we, we do both. Uh, we it, When we initially started out, we were a commercial agency, and we did about 20% nonprofit. And then just the way development goes and things nurture, we became an 80% nonprofit and 20% uh, commercial. And now we're, we're closer, not 50%, but we're closer to that. So we have a lot of non, non-profit organizations that we work with. Mm-hmm. So anyone who has direct response, 
I love space ads. So if you have a space ad, let me do your space ads. I love space ads. Uh, uh, they're, they're not as effective as other things, but they're fun to do. Yeah. Uh, so any anything with direct response on that uh, yeah. mastermind groups, you know, we love to work with them mm-hmm. too. So personal development. Anyone wants to grow from four million to ninety million, you should hire. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and but and be a be a good leader for it so that we can do that. Yeah, that's, right, that's right. So two last questions. One, you have obviously from talking to you, you have a huge focus on customer service, right? Yes. Customer service landed your wife. Yes. Talk about that for a second. Uh, I'd forgotten that we talked about that. <laughs> we didn't actually. Just from we my didn't. research. No. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Oh, well, good. That's that's fun. Um, after my paper route, uh, I graduated to working at the grocery store, and uh, I think I made 81 cents an hour, I think is what it was. Uh, and um, so when you're a package boy, you have a little bit of flexibility as to which line you go to to, to package. You have a checker, you have a customer, and you have a person puts the stuff into the bag. So they were called package boys at that point. And um, we, were, we were young. We were 16, 17, 18. And uh, we would always know when an attractive daughter came into the store, and then we figure out who the mother was. <laughs> and, the daughter. and so, whenever this particular mother came in, who had these two particular daughters that I thought were quite attractive, I learned to make sure that I got to package her packages or, or groceries, and that was um, um, engaging and conversational, and and developed a friendship right. uh, with the mother. And then when I was promoted to, to checker from 81 to 89 cents an hour, when I got to be a checker, then the mother would come over into my line and wait for me for, to check. Even if there were like other lines mm-hmm. or less, she would come over and wait in my line. And of course, the daughters would come. And then I'd get a chance to engage with the daughters. And so that's how I, I made the first connection with, with my wife. Uh, and I, and I, don't, I don't think this is in anything, but uh, my wife was in the fifth grade when I was in the sixth grade at the same elementary school. We didn't, I didn't know her then. I, I was big man on campus because I was in the sixth grade. <laughs> she was just in the fifth. Uh, and then when I moved to the seventh, we moved to, to a same area but a different school. There's a brand new school, a growing area. And then we met up again and um, going to church together. But it's through the grocery store. Mm-hmm. It's through befriending the mother and developing a relationship with the mother who brought the daughters that had a chance to... Get another you were enterprising in business, and you were very strategic. I yes. like that. And it, it, it was it was a good deal. 40, 49 years this yeah. this year. Forty nine. Congratulations. Years. Thank you. Yeah. So my last question is along those lines, Paul. Is because um, I knew you. I, I I had thought it was forty seven years, but now it's forty nine. Maybe. Yeah. So, give us some lessons in a successful, long, marriage for people out there. Yeah, the, the, the first thing is... So maybe no I should talk answer. to your wife. No, yeah, there, yeah there, there's definitely no magic answer. Uh, it, I, I, lo- I love the, the expression of uh, prayer, patience, and Prozac. You know, so... <laughs> so, so Heavy on the Prozac. You know, no, I'm just kidding. Prozac. It had a lot of prayer. Uh, both sides, you know, both sides. You know, it's, it's definitely, you know, give and take, 100%, 100%. Um, it, you know, I think... I have come up with another response to that is okay. I think it's willing I, there, there are two I think it's willing to want to be in the relationship and again that goes back to marketing you know is is the consumer the donor the the, the members member or the constituent the advocate are they willing to be with you can you create a climate that they're willing to be with and so I think I think that's it there um, one of the movie stars parents said this and I love this I think that's very true um, when when she uh, Pat, uh, Pal- Paltrow, Gwyneth Paltrow, Gwyneth Paltrow okay. her, her parents and and she asked how long how they stayed together, and I think the dad said, because neither one of us were stupid at the same time, and and that's that's really a good thing, and I think that's another part of marriage is we we both have not been stupid at the same time. So. <laughs> that's great. Paul, thank you. I really appreciate this. Everyone oh. should check out BinghamAgency.com. Check it out. And it's been an absolute honor, Paul. Thank, thank you, Jeremy. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand right now.